Right, welcome to this painting tutorial for Chaos Space Marines. And I thought I'd share a technique with you. I'm actually painting these up on commission at the moment uh, for a client and very happy with the results. So I thought I'd turn it into a painting tutorial. It's about time to put up something together for uh, those that are looking to paint up Chaos uh, armies. So here is one uh, here. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see the results on this, but it's an exciting technique. It's very quick and you can get some amazing results. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to go from this here to this result here. And I'm you know, really happy with how it's come out. This is the model I've, uh, we're painting up here in this tutorial. I'm going to show you from start to finish how to get the results that you see here on the screen. It looks daunting with all the detail, but you're going to use the detail that Games Workshop provide to your advantage. And it's really based on techniques here that I'm going to show you here in this video. And then you just follow along step by step. So you can paint your first model along with me here in the video. So uh, paint each stage, I'll guide you through, press pause on the video, paint the next stage and so on, graduate way through and then you'll be able to go from, from that to that. So that's the kind of results that you can be aiming for. So uh, first thing we'll do then is cover materials that you'll need for this project. Which isn't too bad actually for paints. Um, so we'll do varnishes or sprays first of all. So this one here, this is the key to success with this technique, is this fantastic brown here. It's uh, leather brown um, from Army Painter. So that's your foundation colour. You're going to spray the entire model, including the base, and then you build up your colours on top of that. So uh, leather brown. We'll cover the process of that in just a moment. And then to finish your Munitorum varnish. Uh, then some PVA glue for doing your basing and stick it on the grass later on. Not wood glue, you've got to be careful which glue you use. PVA glue's got a nice bit of flex in it. Polyvinyl acetate uh, is the name of that glue, so you uh, get a hold of that. It's great stuff for doing your basing. Uh, pallets, washes, tissue. Then here, uh, some tufts of grass if you want to add that onto the basing. So you can get a hold of those from places like eBay or Green Stuff World is where I get mine from as well. Uh, then, selection of brushes all sorts of sizes. Then for paints, it's actually quite a small palette here. It's a strong theme for this one. You know, for Chaos, I always like the idea of the red, different shades of red, the rust and bronze, uh, and that rugged kind of look, the rusty kind of look, and that's what I've captured here of this colour scheme. Um, so it's sort of the word bearers really, it's the colour scheme, but I'm sort of slight take on that. Uh, so colours then, uh, I want to go for do the basic colours here. Evil Sun Scarlet. Then uh, Corn Red. Ceramite White. The Bad and Black. Then uh, Steel Legion Drab. Ushabti Bone. Then Metallics uh, Rune Fang Steel. Uh, Hashat Copper. Iron Breaker. Then for washes, uh, known oil, you don't have to go for that. You'll see a bit later on, it's kind of optional, but it's there if you wish. Uh, you may find it more useful in things like tanks, larger projects. And this technique, by the way, I've used on, I've been painting the whole army up, and I've used it on all the models, all the vehicles and so on. So this technique, you can apply it throughout the, uh, your project. But uh, known oil, it's optional for this particular model uh, that you're going to see being painted up. You may well want to use it for vehicles. Uh, then uh, Agrax Surf Shade, you will need that one. Uh, and then the seraphim sepia here. This is the key to success here. It's that brown spray that you've seen and then the use of uh, the washes to help do all the shading and the hard work for you. So that's pretty much all the materials that you'll need. So uh, we'll go on to sort of the preparation stage now before you start painting, which will be, I'll just cover basing materials here. So I've got two tubs. First tub is some larger stones. If you're building a base up and you're putting stones around, making some kind of design there for you, you can pick through what you need. And these smaller stones just here, this is kind of gravel. 
found that on a beach. Such a nice natural random kind of look. All right, and then a bit of that gravel and then mixed with uh, normal sand as well. So it's normal just sand and then you get that from the hardware store. Like so. So I'll run you through the preparation, very straightforward. Uh, so for the base, uh, those basic materials that I showed you earlier on, you construct the model, build the whole thing, stick it on the base, uh, all glued and solid, and then uh, PVA glue, and you stick in your stones. So some of the rubble and then some of the sand uh, to finish off. Just painting the whole base quite generously in the PVA glue all the way around, and then dropping some of the stones on top, and then secondly, tapping the spare ones off, and then dipping the whole base in, covering over with the sand to finish off, giving it a tap to help it all settle down tap to knock, knock the extra off and then with your thumb just run around the base just to take the excess off the edge of the base just to tidy it up let that dry entirely once that's completely dry and you can do a whole like a whole batch of models and units and so on once that's dry entirely you're spraying the entire thing so the trim of the base the basing and the whole model in your leather brown and that's going to save you tons of time it shades uh, the sand on top it gives you the final trim color on your base and it gives you a, a perfect uh, color here to add on your metallics and your reds as well. They just go on in one coat and they'll be on brilliantly. So that's going to save you tons of time. All the shading is done. We've got this nice brown that's just shaded the entire model. So uh, it's, it really, really does help. So once that's all dry, uh, with the leather brown, you can go straight onto washers with that. Uh, it shouldn't puddle. Uh, at all it should go on fine and your paint should go on fine as well uh, if you are at all worried then you can give it a coat of Munitorin varnish quick light spray just to help the paints go on but it should be fine I don't usually uh, need to give it a coat of the varnish you can just go straight on with paint straight onto your leather brown once it's dry but that is key try and do that if you can because that's where you're going to save tons of time it gives you a step ahead with your basing uh, and then a step ahead with the main model as well and you can just immediately go on to your base colors with that but that's your preparation. You should end up with a model sort of looking like this, ready to go. Uh, so the next stage then, I think we'll work on the base first of all. So uh, we'll get stuck in with the base, get that done out of the way, and then we'll start on the model itself. All right, so uh, first thing I'm gonna do is work on this base here. Uh, so I've got a, so Games Workshop base brush here. It's an old one. Just gonna damp it. Just put the bristles in my mouth just to so it's going to be a dry brush, I don't want it too dry though, so just a, a slightly, very, very slightly damp brush just to help with the flow of this highlight here. I'm going to take a shabti bone and then I'm just going to scrub it out onto the palette here, just sort of covering the brush with it. And then I'm just going to flick it over the detail, or over this texture made by the sand and rocks. And just scrubbing the brush backwards and forwards catch the highlights. It's an old brush, uh, highlighting sand like this does wear out brushes so just using an old brush here, getting a little bit more paint to this, covering all the bristles, not too heavy because I don't want to fill in the details and then just working my way around here. Now being careful not to go over the boots because they're already in the right shade of brown for us, and being careful not to go over the side of the rim of the base. If you do you can just wet your finger or thumb and then just quickly rub the paint off because that trim is already at the right colour for us, so we don't want to have to repaint that. So just going around, and you can really get quite quick at this, just angling the brush so I'm not catching that boot. If you do catch the boot by accident, if it's not too bad a mistake, you can leave it because you'll be highlighting, you'll be wash, putting washes over it, and then highlighting it later with the dust effect as well. So that should cover up any mistakes, unless it's a terrible one. I'm just going to work the brush just in between his legs there, in between there and around, just making sure I've got all of it. Like so. Then you do a batch of 10 of these. When the brush is still damp, with the paint, I'm not going to wash it out. I'm just going to go straight onto the Ceramite White. And I want that quite strong. With just a little hint of the Ashabdi bone mixed in with it, so it's not too stark a white. And again, same again, just catching the highlight here. Not going as heavy this time. Not scrubbing in as hard, catching these stones around the feet so you can see the difference between the two and then around the back here just keep moving before this brush dries out. There you go, made a mistake, just gonna wet the finger and wipe that off. 
a little bit more around the front of the feet here. In between, catch the edge of that stone. That's your highlighting dump. So that base is nicely highlighted there with those two paints. Once that's dry, uh, next you take your seraphim sepia wash, and I'm just going to shade around the where the feet go into the base. See, that just shades it in nicely, just sets them in there, just adds another tone into this base. So I go around the feet first of all. Again, it's nice and quick, this technique. Then around any features, I might go around this rock a little bit, shade that in, and then just some random patches on the base as well. So it looks something like that. Not too much, we're just introducing another sh uh, shade of brown, uh, and that finishes that base off. So we've got to do later is add a bit of grass, but that's the base finish. Very quick, nice effect just there. And because you've uh, sprayed it this color, your trim's already the right colour, the shading's already done, so just in case of highlighting, put a, a, a bit of a wash on top, and that's that basing sorted out. So, looking good, and we're ready to go on to the main model now. Right, so, uh, base colours then. Hashak Copper first, we'll do the metallics first. It's quite a dominant colour on this model. Uh, so, I'll show you one that we've done, or I'm working on at the moment. This is one, this is one that's halfway there, just to show you where this copper can go. It's going to dominate this model quite a lot here. Really it's your weaponry, like the axe for example and the bolt pistol, it's going to be your standard metal, uh, your silver, uh, the iron breaker colour and then it's all the gold trim which is a lot on this one here. Chaos models are going to vary, this one's got a lot. So it's just common sense. All the trims on the armour, it should be nicely sculpted out for you. The trim around the plates just here, a lot of the head uh, decoration and so on and around here and then you can pick and choose where you want to go this arrow I think I'm going to do I'll do the rest in a silver trim so you're just picking that out there uh, it's quite ornate looking but you'll get a, a great effect on this quite quickly so just common sense I'm using a larger brush now this is an artist opus brush uh, size 2 and you're looking to be this is going to go on really nice onto this brown it will just go on straight away now you notice I'm not being particularly neat here because you're going to pick out the detail a bit later on so it's gone all over that shoulder pad which is no problem at all then uh, the trim that's on the plate on his arm picking that out as well now this will get quite tedious, there's a lot of trim on these this particular models, but it's going to vary depending on what Chaos models you're painting on. I'll show you a Chaos Space Marine, one of the older models, but you can see there's a fair bit of trim on that as well. So this is just your base colour. The great thing about this brown base spray is it's a perfect tone just to paint straight on with this metallic and it'll look perfect. So it's just to make sure you get that copper covered. See it's gone all over the chest here, doesn't matter, you'll fill that in neater later on. I'm just going to run that around, around the back there. That whole front skull head will be this colour, nice and easy. And it'll look great when it's highlighted up. Uh, the trim around his head, here and here. Not forgetting the sides on top as well. And your artistic license you can uh, use this wherever you want to but it's going to be the dominant colour on this scheme that I'm doing here. Round the back of the head, rest of the headrest, just there. So I'm going to keep going but I'm just going to cover those areas. The priority is to make sure uh, that I cover all those areas that I want done. It doesn't matter if it fills in other areas, we'll pick that up later, later on with the red and so on. But uh, just working on you pick and choose where you want to go. This chainmail, obviously, here. I'm going to leave that silver. Chainmail in between his legs. I'm going to leave that silver as well. So, it really, it's anything that's ornate, trim, and decorative on the armor, I'm going to do in this coppery color. Getting there. It's about halfway done. So, I'll keep going in. All right. So, the model looks something like that. Next is the iron breaker. Same process again. So, not worrying about being too neat at this stage because you're tidy up with other colours. As I think on the axe here, this shaft 
You can leave it brown if you think it's going to be wood. I think it'd be metal. So I'm going to cover that. One coat will do. Now, as I put this paint on, you'll see that it's not perfect. It's what about 90, 80, 90 percent coverage on there with a little bit of. You can see the brown. Doesn't matter because it's uh, uh, going to be a rusty, worn-out kind of look anyway. So that's no problem at all. I just want to cover the model or cover the areas I want done. Working all the way around. The handle, the grip that he's got is some kind of linen or something, so I'm going to just leave that and that will just shade nicely the natural brown that it already is. So I'll just work that way around there. That. That's the X ready to go. We'll add on our rust and so on later on. Bit of chainmail you can see dangling down, so I'll just stab that brush into that with that paint. In between his legs, I'm going to go neatly here. I've got quite a good tip on this larger brush. And I'm just going to stab in the chain mount. So strings hanging down, I'll leave those because again, they're already the right color. Bit of chain mount dangling down here. Stab that in, like so. Uh, the bolt pistol. It's going to be a black panel on here, but I want to fill in everything else with the silver. Like that. The cartridge, pick that out. The actual uh, point of the gun there as well. Pistol, shading round, tucking the brush in there. Let's get those colours on, like that. Then come to the backpack in just a moment, just looking around, just checking anywhere else. This spike here, yeah, I could do it in silver, I could leave it bronze. I think I'll just leave it in bronze, it's fine. Uh, and then, a bit of chain mail here, dangling down. And there should be some here. A little bit poking out at the back here. So I'll pick that up in between his legs. Pick that up. Right, then the backpack. So I'm going to do these vents here. So I'm just working the brush along. Nice and quick. And then this area here. This whole vent at the back here. So I've gone onto this brown. That's going to be red later on, but I'll neaten I'll use the red to neaten it. Working all the way around. Here now. So, uh, these pipes coming out, you'll find out a lot of the backpack's going to be the silver colour. It's all this hardware. Pipes and vents. And again, because you're not too worried about neatness here, because you're tied up with the red anyway, you can go quite quickly. The last thing I'm going to do is spend ages picking this out when you don't need to use the red. Be neat with the red later on. Then these vents at the back. Filled in the middle and in the trim. Again, nice and quick, so we'll tidy up with the red later. Let's work the brush around. Like so, there's a little nib sticking out there and there. And just checking over the model. That is about it. Yeah, it's just looking around. I think that's everything on there. So that's your metallic sorted out. It doesn't look too much at the moment, but when you start putting the washes on later on, all the details picked out, and then especially when you get those highlights picked out uh, as well, it, it really does look great. So there he is. We've gone to some uh, layer paints, or some standard colours to add to this. So a little bit of flesh. As you can use the shabty bone here, because I don't want these chaos looking too healthy looking. So shabty bone, and uh, it's just where uh, his arm here. So I'm just going to push the paint into that gap. That's where his bare arm is, and just round the back there. One coat will be enough, and there's a, t there's a little bit of muscle in there as well on the other arm, so I'll just 
I don't want to go over my brass trim on this. There, that looks okay. So just tucked in there. It doesn't look right at the moment as far as skin shade is concerned, but it's a cow space print. They have that kind of washed out the colour bleached from their flesh because they're so corrupt. So that's the kind of colour we're gonna go for. Uh, then things like the, the straps and the belts and so on. I've just noticed the skulls actually. Any skulls that you want done. Sometimes on the face you might want to do the skulls, an actual colour. I've gone for the metallic look. Uh, and then here. You can see these skulls just here. I'll pick those out. Nice, tidy. It's been tidy now with this. One skull. And then a second skull. Like that. Then, uh, the next guy actually making really good progress here. So, we'll start introducing these reds. So the idea is to, when I uh, put this colour scheme together, uh, this dark red looks great, but then to add an area of interest uh, to the head and shoulders, I've gone for a, a stronger red around here. So where the, the, the main focus, where you're gonna look at the model is gonna be around the head and shoulders area. So I'm gonna put, I put the emphasis on that. So I've used a brighter red. So I'll start with the Evil Sun Scarlet. And I've echoed that theme throughout the collection here, has been painted up different models, even the vehicles. So tanks, for example, uh, like the main turret are doing red, the rest of the body uh, are doing the darker uh, red, the corn red. Dragnauts, again, dragnauts, maybe you could do the shoulders and the dragnaut and the, the head of the face in the brighter red, so you just follow that general rule. Uh, I'm gonna go down to a uh, tighter brush here, so size one. The artist opus here. And just some paint on the tip. So for example, you've done the trim here for this head design. So now I'm gonna do the infill in this red. And again, this brilliant brown that we've used to undercoat this model is perfect. The red will go on nicely like that. One coat and nice and bright. And now you wanna be nice and neat at this stage. Do you want to be correcting mistakes or just slow you down? So I'm just putting that in neatly, but just fills in because it's all etched for you. The face, I could try and pick it up, but I think it looks nice just in the bronze, like that. And then uh, the shoulder pads. So there's a, a panel in here. Then there's a design, and then there's a panel at the back. using the brush I can see where it is it's all etched for you so it's quite straightforward like so and then we'll do the shoulder pad around the other side very clear where the paint goes just pushing it in up to the edge of where they've sculpted it for you that color doesn't take too long that one next is the corn red let's paint the shake people have been asking about how do you keep your paints flowing so I, I do keep an eye on them and add water to them as I go along so it just sounds right this one here yeah it looks good and the paint's slow dripping so it's got a nice consistency to it so you can see see the paint dripping there yeah, there's a good consistency now. Just a bit of water. Keep shaking it, and they should last a good while. So it's again, same process again. The dark red, again, in between all of the panels. So this panel on his chest. Again, nice and neat. It's all sculpted for you. I'll show you that regular cow space range just to give you an idea of how it looks on other models. Because this one's a lot more intricate, this one here. These uh, berserkers. But there it is, just filling it in. All sculpted for you, so it's quite obvious where it goes. See the other side of his chest, nice and tidy, like that. Then there's another chest plate down here. This is the longest of the colours to do. Working around, 
like that. Now just keep going. Uh, there'll be uh, solid armor plates like this knee pad, for example. There's nothing ornate on that, so it's just going to be a solid color. Nice and neat up to the boot, which is already in that brown. So uh, the idea here is that you're, you've got a base color that you've sprayed on and it fills in loads of areas. Areas that aren't really significant. People aren't really going to look at the boots. So they've got a brown, shade it, done. And then the focus will be on this lovely glint, glinting armor as that's painted up later. And the idea is that the model still looks great, but you've saved yourself just with some clever tricks and priorities of where you're painting. You're saving yourself a ton of time still getting what I think is a great result for this. Always love the rusty, rusty gold and red effect for Chaos Space Marines. Just a very unique style to go for. Just like that. And, and then just going all the way around and then the backpack here. Uh, it's this panel which I'm being neat now around the silver. Around that skull. Like so. Neat as you can, something like that. But I'll keep going here to finish this off. Uh, there's a, a cow space screen here, just showing you how the same priority here. So red for the head, shoulder pads, like so, and then the darker red around everything else. You see the backpack there as well. So I'll just press on here and continue on with this uh, corn red. All right, so model should look something like this, painted up, almost ready for the washes now, making really good progress. Uh, so remember just at the back of the helmet here as well, just to fit in the brighter Evil Sun Scarlet, uh, just at the back there, but uh, that's showing the detail in the backpack, picked out, it takes a while, I'm being sort of 90% neat, you know, the, doesn't have to perfectly match up, because all those two washes are going to go into this and fill in all the details, so just generally neat here. It's not perfect, but uh, it's generally tidy, like so. Next color is the black. So there's not too much on here. If you had a chain sword, for example, there'd be more black to do. You'd be painting it like that. But here it's just this panel on the bolt pistol. So it's just a case of going around here. And again, being tidy, all the silver's done for you. So it'll be nice and tidy. Around that, around that, around that. Alright, on top here, apart from the spikes, I'll fill that in. Like so. And then around the front of the bolt pistol. Apart from that nib at the top there, the rest I'll fill in. Like that, and then just tuck it in underneath as well. And then here, if you can see, there's a, a nib that sticks up. I'm going to leave that, but paint the rest in black. There's a gap in between. I'll leave that silver. Like so. And then the panel on the other side, as far as you can see, and reach it. Like that. So that's the bolt pistol. Like so, just look around, don't think there's anywhere else to do. You could do a bit more work on the axe if you want to, but the silver's enough. By the time it's all highlighted and picked out, it'll look great. So yeah, happy enough with all of that. So let that black dry, and then we'll be ready to go on to washes. So I have two washes here. Uh, no one oil, and the seraphim sepia. No one oil, I'm just going to strengthen any larger areas uh, of this axe, for example. Just want a darker shade on that because it's meant to be pure metal. So no one oil on that. No one oil on, on that, just there. I might stab a little bit into the chain mount. And the bolt pistol can take a little bit. The Agrax surf shade will add later or rust it out a little bit more, but I just want to strengthen that with the no one oil. Like so, just a little bit, I, I think this is going to be fine. Just the large areas, really the pistol and the, the axe. Then, uh, Seraphim Sepia over the rest of the model. So this is your rusty shade. 
it's going to go over all the armor, skin, run onto the axe a little bit, onto the boots, around the boots. Do you want it puddling too much? In between all the gaps here, across all the armor, all the armor panels, working its way in. It's everywhere. This is the great thing about this technique, because all this color scheme is you just blanket coverage here, which means you get nice and quick results here. All the chain mount and the armor, armor plate, see it all shading in nicely. Great job. This arm stabbing up right underneath the backpack. Uh, the backpack itself. This had a nice rusty effect. Just keep going out. And again, use an old brush. I'm not worried if it, the bristles get wrecked on it. Onto the helmet. I want to get all the details in between, it's just rotating the helmet around, stabbing right down into the crevice in the neck, making sure that the shading goes right into there as well. Making sure this backpack's covered all the way around, and there's a gap here, if not filled down yet. Just stabbing all that in. These main panels at the front, the face, and so on. All the way around, just checking the model over. See that's toned all the colours, it's just the, the inks help to link everything together as well, just tires everything in. And just making sure it's not too, don't want it too heavy. Yeah. That's great. See those boots? Lovely shading going on with those boots, beautiful. So it's going to save you loads of work, but still look great. And, and then I might put a little bit onto this axe, just to, just to rust it up a little bit. You almost don't even need that now, no, you can just go straight on with the seraphim sepia. It depends how rusty you want the axes and weapons to look, but for this particular colour scheme, oh, you'll look fine to have rusty weapons here. But uh, there he is. So that's got to dry entirely, and then we'll go on to the second wash, which is the Agrax Earth Shade. Again, that's a brown, but it's got a darker tone to it, so that'll really strengthen the recesses and all the details for you. But we'll let this one dry, and then be ready to move on to the next wash. All right, so that's dry. Going to take the Agrax Earth Shade as the next wash. And this time, I add over the whole of the model. So by all means, use a larger brush. I'm using this one here, but you can use a, a wash brush, one of the larger ones, no problem at all. But this one here will really strengthen the shading. You can see there uh, between his legs and those skulls, it's made that nice and strong. So again, you don't want this one puddling. No harm going over those boots again, just to really give a nice strong shade to them as well. So I've got a smaller brush here for precision, but uh, you can definitely use a larger brush. As long as you're reaching all of the nooks and crannies here, around the helmet. Picking out all those details. Around the back of the helmet. Front plate. Shoulder pad. A lot of the hard work's been done now. The colours are where they should be. Uh, your shade's going on to fill in all your details for you. Uh, that axe is rusting up nicely now. It's like a dark, but it's got that rust still in it. That's looking great. Shading again. Just stabbing the brush to make sure it fills in all the gaps for me. We're coming around the back. So back boots there, armor plate. Working up again under the backpack. This arm all the way around. This arm virtually there now. Running around along the top behind the backpack. In front of the backpack. Stabbing down in between the neck to shade that nicely. Onto the backpack itself. shades and all that metal work for you. These washes are great. You know, the effect is with the 
half of the effect here is with these washers, which is easy to apply. You know, this, this you know, for skill level, you know, this technique here is great if you're just a beginner looking to get some great results quickly and without too many technical skills required. I mean, painting basic colours, washers over the top, very straightforward. Even if you're not particularly a neat painter, once the washers start going over the top, you still get away of covering up your mistakes pretty good because uh, you're relying on the detail on the actual sculpting itself to help you out it's all been picked out for you what the sculptors have done so that looks great so that's gone on and it's all nicely toned down colors are where exactly where they should be colors are toned down some areas are finished the boots are finished now virtually apart from a little bit of dusting to add to them later on uh, your minor details the straps and things here and there all shaded in just using that brilliant brown colour and then the other colours are ready to go once this dries you can just pick those out in a few stages but this model's come along great so there he is let him dry and we'll move on to the, the final highlighting stage all right so the next stage is to paint the metallics first painting the right order is going to be key here to save you trouble if you paint the red for example first it's quite likely you're going to flick uh, the metallics back onto it again so you want to do the metallics first of all and then go neat with the two colours of red there so Hashuk Copper now again save your time you could repaint the Hashuk Copper but instead I'm just going to go straight onto the final highlight there so take your Hashuk Copper onto a palette and then the Rune Fang Steel which is your lighter steel and then mixing them together you'll see the shade as it comes out it's about 50-50 mix so it's quite bright and then I've got an older older brush here. Uh, you'll see these paints aren't dripping too much. They're quite thick, uh, a little bit thicker. And that's because I want the pigment stronger. I'm doing a highlight with them. I don't want it watery. I want it to pick out detail. Now see if this works uh, as I put it onto the, the helmet here. So I'm looking to pick out the detail. Got the brush at an angle. And I'm just dragging it over the top. A little bit of red's flicked up onto the helmet there. So I've just covered it and corrected that so just using again taking advantage of the great sculpting work done here just picking out I think you can see the effect there I might even add a little bit more silver to this so it's a real 50 50 if not 60 40 of the silver it may sound too much but it seems to work just nice so running the brush across the helmet here and you should see it picks out my details for me. Yeah, that's coming up better. That's that stronger shade that I'm after here. Now you can see the helmet picked out like so. Just a case of carrying on. So edge of the armor. Just angling the brush to pick that out. And then the decorative plate running around. The brush starts to dry up too much. You can see the plate there on his chest picked out nicely. If the brush starts to dry up too much, wash it out and start again. Slightly damp brush won't be a problem. Just gonna pick out the edges here. Again, being as neat as you can, but if you flick onto the red, it doesn't matter too much. You can uh, you'll be going over it again later anyway. But uh, I'm just gonna try and be neat because it'll just save you having to correct mistakes late, later on. There you see I've edged the plates around the legs. This is going on quite quickly yet. Yeah. Now the trim on his shoulder. And then a lovely etched design on the shoulder pad here. Just run the brush across the top of it. And that's the kind of result you get. Look at that glinting beautiful armour. And how easy is that for a technique? So you should be able to get some great results here. Again, skill level pretty pretty low here, which is the great thing about this. There's a skull just to pick up pick out there, which I've done. Plate around the arm. And that's what the uh these tutorials, all all of the tutorials are trying to develop techniques that uh, give you great results. But trying to keep in mind you're trying to build an army to play play in a game, maybe aim for two thousand points, and so you want to get some uh, good results but quite quickly um, there are processes out there where you get some amazing results but you know great for one model but you know it's going to take you forever if you're going to try and paint an army so just trying to create that balance of nice results but good pace 
to progress, just gonna mix up a bit more here because I'm running out. Just using the pad to mix it up. So do this shoulder pad here. Just flicking the brush along and it's just catching all the tips and edges like so. And then going around there. Looks good. If you can see that glinting armor across the model. So I'll just carry on. Same process uh, to get that done. So it models coming along well. If you want to go for the uh, ultimate glint on the armor, then you can take almost pure rune fang steel and just catch some extreme edges. You don't have to do this. Uh, maybe the very top of his crest, his face, the eye is going to be drawn towards that. So I'm just going to add in a little bit of the silver to that. A bit on top of the shoulder pad here, just the very crispy edges of the armor. Tip of this bit, a spike sticking up of the head crest just adds a little bit more edge to it don't have to do that which is an option if you so wish so that's that done uh, so then you can go on to what i would do now is i'm going to do a little bit of the iron breaker but it's just going to be uh the chain mount just drying the brush out here So just the chainmail agent, um, the axe and so I'll work on later on, but just this chainmail because I don't want to flick onto the, the red later on. So really I'm just prioritizing the the edge of it. I'm not going over the whole thing, I just want to pick out the edges a little bit. If it's too deeply hidden away, I'll just leave it tucked in there between his legs, it's fine. Uh, this bit dangling down, just catch the bottom edges really. Like so. So all the shading work's done for me, so I don't need to rigidly go over the whole thing. And then at the back here, just catch a little bit of it. A little bit there, because that shading works on a great job. A little bit there, a little bit between his legs, and that'll do. I'll pick out the rest later on. It's just you can you can leave it all till later if you think it'd be neat enough. But I'll just get that chain mail done for now. So next, you go back onto your red, Evil Sun Scarlet, and then with a neat enough brush, it's a case of repainting what you've done now. Again, here to save time, I'm not going to repaint this really neat. The shading around the edges is all done for you, so I'm just going to stab the colour in. And that's it. Nice and tidy, because you want to go on to your metal work that you've done. But just stabbing the paint in, so I'm not really repainting as such. I'm just sort of filling in the central area of each panel with the red. Like so. Maybe show you better on this panel. So I'm not painting it in, I'm just going to stab some red into the middle. And leave the shading as it is. Like that. And it just gives it a nice glow. So larger panels, you know, you'd, you'd see it more, but I'm just sort of stabbing the paint in here. And there's a little bit to do around the back. Stab the paint in there. Like that. So you can particularly see it on here. See the shading's done for you. And you're just stabbing in the, the middle part there. Just to bring that colour back out. Then it's going to be... And that's it. Nice and quick. Then it's going to be the corn red. Same idea. With this one. So, say this chest panel just here, stab a bit in the middle, done. You've already done all the hard work, so there's no point in neatly going around it. Stab a bit in the middle, stab a bit in the middle on this one. It's that fast. Uh, yeah. uh, this knee pad here, I'm just going to drag the brush around it. Just to bring it back to that original colour. And uh, here as well, when it dries it will tone right down. Like that. 
it's very quick. It's going to be nice and tidy so you're not going over the metal work here. But this, it, there's a great combo going on here with these dark reds. The lovely shading and all the metallics all being picked out. And it's a real glint to it. But still that rusty chaos kind of look. So it's a, that's a great combination. I really do like this colour scheme. So I just continue going all the way around. Things like the backpack. Just paint the solid colour back on. So that round bit just around like so. Around and around. So I'm not repainting finally the whole thing. I'm just covering the main panel areas and filling them in. Uh, I just need to remember the red at the on the back of the crest there uh, with the Eagle Sun Scarlet. But I'll uh, continue going around here with the corn red, and then that'll be that stage finished. All right. So model's looking like this at the moment. So really good progress. We'll go on to the uh, silver next. So back onto the iron breaker. Uh, so you main so this axe, for example, the main colour's done, shading's done for you, and so really just looking to put an edge, a highlight on this here. So I've got a, a thinner brush, it's a damp brush here, it's an artist opus uh, double zero, double O. Uh, so I just want to pick out some edges on here. Don't do too much because this is really going to be a rusty sort of look about this model. You can see the, the axe being picked out there. The shaft might pick out a little bit. I've got to try and resist doing too much. Just picking out all the natural edges. Already there. The edge of the axe. And one little trick you can do is a couple of these marks. Just dragging the brush along just to give it that kind of cutting edge kind of look and that's about it I'll work around the other side in just a moment you've got the, the heel of it here the, end, the other end just catch the edge of that already picked out the chain mail make sure I catch all these edges with this I'm actually just grabbing the brush along here because it's achieving virtually the same <laughs> the same result so Got to try to stay away from that precise kind of line paint to do it for the Eldar to paint the lines all very precisely. We're trying to resist that here with chaos, more of an effect, more than precise painting. But that has caught the edge of that axe just nice. That's looking fine. Uh, other areas will be any rings and bits dangling here on the edge of the armor. Uh, I'll come to the backpack in just a moment. These spikes on the bolt pistol. We're also going to do chipping here, which we'll, we'll cover. It's the same kind of idea with the bolt pistol. So I want to catch the edges of the metalwork. Something like that. And the front. And then this black panel, I want to just uh, edge. Uh, highlight that just put, just where you think it would take some bashes and scrapes just picking that out like so pretty straightforward nice little detail to add on gives that nice metallic kind of look the details in here I can't really see on the inside of the pistol so I'm just touching a few bits and that's it I'm just gonna leave it it's not significant it's just tucked away in the in the shade there so this knee pad then, the, the key with the chipping is not to do too much. There's some already sculpted onto the model. So I'm going to do a scrape running down his leg, or running down the knee pad, like so. And then a, a few dots, but you mustn't do too much. The uh, You have the urge to, to keep adding to it, and then it can get too much. It looks over the top and it's ruined. So the key is just a, a few, especially all the other metallic work going on. That's it, a few dots and scrapes on the edges. And that's enough. Like so, you don't want to go any more than that at all because it starts to overwhelm the other metal work that's going on. So really keep it to a minimum. And again, it's going to save you time because you don't have to do loads. So the edge of his fist here, which is going to... He's going to pick up some scrapes on that. Nice and quick. Fine, fine. A little bit there, a little bit on this fist on the other side. Done. Then the backpack. 
brush slightly dry, you can use your thumb here a little bit, and then just catch in the edge of this. Catch the edge of that. Brush at an angle, catch in the edge of that. See how quick this can be? Catch the edge of this, just the brush at the right angle. Edge of that, edge of that. Edge of this. That's highlighted that up nice. And then just want to catch the, the top edge of this one. One and two. Not going to go all the way around. Don't need to. Leave it rusty around the other side. Just the top edge of it. Uh, then catching a few edges from these bits. Then angling the brush on the armour itself. Just going to catch a few edges from there as well. Just don't make a, you don't want to make a mountain out of it. Just do nice and quick. A few bashes and scratches on these bits. Like so. Tuck a bit on the inside. Maybe put a bit wary of doing it, but needs just going to put a couple of little dashes on the inside of one of those panels. That's enough. Don't do too much at all. And a couple of edges here. Just going around. Very happy with the results here at the moment. Yeah, this could do with a little bit of scratching on there and on there, and a little bit on the back. That's it. No, happy enough. So there you see the backpack's all picked out nicely. And the armour. Lovely. Okay. Now remember there's the flesh to do next. So again with a damp brush here, it's uh, double O. A shab T bone. And I'm just picking out the muscles. I was thinking of running some white mixed in with this, but I think that's enough. I don't want to stick out too much. There it is, a bit of flesh painted there. Again, I've just put the, the brush in my mouth there, just keeping it nice and damp, because I don't want a too solid a layer here. I'm going to pick out this bicep muscle here. A little bit of detail, but it's just tucked away, so I don't want to emphasize it too much. I'm just tidying it up a little bit where the washers have been in. That's enough. Yep, that's perfect. So that's that done. Get nice and quick. So uh, I think we're pretty much finished here. One touch. I don't think I can do it on these ones because there's no way really to put these markings. But, but so on here you can put some like corn-like markings here, just some markings of how many enemies is slain, something like that. Like so. So you can add that in. But it just shows you, uh, it's one of the older Chaos Space Marine models. Same technique. That's the kind of results that you can get. Like so. But it got something. I the, the more panelling, the more ornate the design, I think the grander it looks. I mean, that's incredible. The, and really, it's the superior sculpting work the Games Workshop have done. So you're taking full advantage of that. So I want to add in a little bit of dusty effect here. Uh, you can see it more on the feet of this Chaos Marine. Again, I wanted it sort of a uh, campaign look, rugged look, so that's easily accomplished. Taking an old brush, some Steel Legion drab, uh, an old brush you don't mind stabbing with, like that, it's an old brush there. Take some Steel Legion drab, stab it out onto the palette here, working it into the bristles, filling the paint out, and then it's gonna it's going to highlight the boots mostly and I want it to run a little bit up onto the armour especially those knee pads at the front just stab into those that's it, it's not going to come up very much a little bit that's it, it's just gone onto the armour a little bit I don't go any higher than that, that's all obviously there'll be more if it's a design where the the feet go all the way to the ground, you can see it more on there. Uh, same process for the vehicles, so the entire army's gone through the same dust, it just unifies them together. Just notice that I haven't picked out those skulls. Those will require a little bit of the ceramite white, so we'll, we'll show you that now. I think this model's done, just need to add on some, some grass to finish off. So, uh, a shabty bone. Repaint the skull, leaving the shading work done for you. It's a teeth. Looking something like that. 
and the other scalp. I'm just going around, just following the sculpting along, leaving the shading work. Shabti bone on the palette, 50-50 or about 60-40 with white. Just going to pick out the edge of the eyes, nose, teeth, top of the scalp. Same here, this one. Like that. That's the skulls picked out just then. Alright, so that's the model. Just there, maybe zoom in so you can get a good view of how he's turned out. But that's your kind of results. Those techniques I've shown you are easy techniques to do. Easy to paint base colours. Also that great brown spray. Basing's easy, paint your base colours, washes go over the top, and you just mix up that colour nice and neat for your highlights. And that bronze really is the feature here, but it's an easy effect to achieve. So I hope that gives you a good idea of how you can paint up your Chaos Space Marines. It doesn't have to be Chaos, you can apply this technique to any of the factions if you wish, but uh, it particularly looks good on Chaos, like so. Uh, so for this project, I'm using uh, the little tufts of grass. So I've simply put a bit of PVA onto my palette. And then we take a tuft of grass, dip it in the PVA, and then just plant it. I think it'll look good next to this rock. Tucked just in there. Great. Talk about the white, that'll disappear when it dries up. And that's that model complete. So as you can then finish that off by using your Munitorum varnish. Give that a coat and that will seal the whole thing in and then that'll be the model finished. But there he is, one cow space ring. You can apply this technique to uh, any of the infantry types. I've done a whole army here, all different uh, units, obliterators and so on. Uh, Dreadnoughts, predator tanks, cow predators, I've used it on same technique. Uh, fantastic, so it works, works out just fine. Uh, same chipping, same bronze effect, same washes, same process, uh, whichever. Uh, unit you're going to be painting, but uh, there it is. That's how to paint Chaos Space Marines by using this nice bronze and red uh, technique. So there it is. Uh, check out the other painting tutorials on the channel. There's plenty of them now for all sorts of different factions. And then for in-depth painting tutorials, check out the Plus channel. Loads of resources on there now for the different factions. The in-depth painting tutorials uh, I take on uh, larger projects, so usually things like tanks. Uh, big dreadnoughts and so on. Sometimes even apocalyptic sized units like Stompers, uh, Storm Surge for the Tower, uh, those tutorials. Take a bit more time with those uh, tutorials, show you all the techniques and how to paint something larger. So check out the Plus Channel for that. There's options on the Plus Channel for those. You can subscribe to the Plus Channel like usual or you can rent or purchase individual videos including those painting tutorials. So if you just want one specific painting tutorial then just go onto Plus Channel and you can purchase or rent that. Uh, just for a very small fee and then that will guide you through the process for those larger projects but uh, there is project complete here hope this has shown you how easy it is to get some great results uh, check out the other painting tutorials on the channel and all the other content that's the video thanks for watching and tune in next time I would actually say if this technique works well uh, then follow me on Instagram and by all means load up your own pictures and uh, link, link me in your uploads that on Instagram and, and then I'll see the work that you've done and uh, it'd be great to see others uh, achieving uh, the great results by using the same technique. But there it is, that's the video. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.